Good morning. Hello and welcome everyone. In today's world where digital ecosystems are expanding faster than ever, security can no longer be a afterthought. It must be engineered, built in, not bolted on. I am thrilled to invite you to a comprehensive 12 part video series on security architecture and engineering, a foundational and advanced exploration that bridges theory, practice and governance. Whether you are a student beginning your journey or a cyber security practitioner refining your craft or a compliance professional aligning systems to regulatory mandate, this series has been thoughtfully created for you. In phase one, we set the groundwork with core concepts. We unpack security models like Bella Podala, Biba, Clark Wilson. We understand system architecture and its principles, including the trusted computing base and the reference monitors. We'll explore preventive, detective and corrective controls. Evaluate systems through common criteria, TCSEC and ITSEC and dwell into cryptographic design and secure system components like hardware, firmware and softwares. That's phase one. In phase two, we move into deep technical exploration. Here, we explore security design principles like defense in depth, least privilege and fail secure. You learn about enterprise architecture frameworks such as SAPSA, TOGAF and Zachman. We'll also cover secure coding, SDLC security integration, engineering focused vulnerability management and dwell into architecture for embedded systems, IoT, mobile, cloud native platforms and containerization. You will gain insights into hardware based securities like TPMs, HSMs, secure boots and trust zones as well as emerging domains like zero trust architecture, confidential computing and the impact of AI ML on architecture. In phase three, we'll turn the spotlight to real world relevance through threat model modeling methodologies like Stride, Dread and Pasta. We will analyze actual breaches, what went wrong and what could have gone right. These case studies will contrast vulnerable versus resilient architectures, giving you blueprints for building secure enterprise patterns while avoiding anti-patterns that exposes organizations to risks. Finally, in phase four, we will converge technology with governance. We will explore how to map architectural design to standards like ISO 27001, Annex A, NIST SP 800-160 and others. We learn how to perform architecture level risk assessments and how to design systems that are not only secure, but compliant with global regulations like GDPR, India's DPDP Act, HIPAA and PCI DSS. Each episode is crafted with clarity and depth, backed by real world examples, theoretical models and regulatory insights. My goal is to demystify complex security concepts empower you to design defensible systems and help you think like a security architect. So if you are passionate about building systems that are secure by design, resilient by architecture and governed by compliance, this series 
is for you. Please subscribe, follow along and join me in this transformative journey into security architecture and engineering. Let's build a safer digital world, one secure design at a time. This is your host, Savit Vithal Salian. Namaskar. Security Architecture and Engineering Part 4 We will look at discretionary and role based model in this part. These models give more control to user or assign access based on job roles. That's discretionary and role based model. Let's go deeper. There are three discretionary access control, role based access control and attribute based access control. Discretionary access control and this the owner of a resource decides who can access it when you say it the resource. It's flexible but less secure because user may grant access carelessly. From an example perspective, in a file sharing system, Alice creates a document. She decides to give read access to Bob, edit access to Charlie. By modifying the files, access control is. So that's how she does it. Alice is the data owner and she controls who else can access the resource. That's the hallmark of TAC. In real world, in Microsoft Windows or Unix or Linux system, user can assign permissions, read, write or execute on files or folder they own. They can grant or revoke access at their discretion. This is a direct application of DAC. Role-based access control. Access is granted based on user's role in the organization. For example, a finance manager might automatically get access to accounting system. Role-based access control. Let's take a look at a theoretical example. In a, in a hospital system, doctors can view and update patient's chart. Nurses can view charts but cannot prescribe medications. Admin staff can schedule appointments but not view the medical records. Each person is assigned a role and access is granted based on that role, not on an individual basis. Real world example, well, in Active Directory or Enterprise application, Roles such as HR manager, finance analyst or system admin are used to assign predefined access rights, making it scalable and manageable across large organizations. Attribute based access control. Well, access decisions are made based on attributes like department, location, or device. It's flexible and allows for fine grained policies. Example, an employee tries to access a document. The system checks whether the user role is manager, what's the location and what's the time. Access is granted only if all the attribute means the policy. Access-based access controls allows for highly granular and context-aware access control. A real-world example, well, AWS IAM policy and Azure AD conditional access use the ABAC principle. For example, a policy might allow access to sensitive data only if the user is in the finance department. 
the request is from a trusted device and the user has multi factor authentication enabled so this ends the part 4 of this series very limited focus here but a critical area for us to understand the future concepts i'd like to thank you for the time that you have invested till now this is your host savit vithal salian we'll meet in part 5 namaskar